Hi, and welcome to the second in our series of lectures on the autonomic nervous system of the head and neck. Um, during these lectures, we're going to be describing the parasympathetic or parasympathetic ganglia of the head and neck. Now, it's important that you have visited some of our previous videos and looked at those as they've laid down the principles of the nervous system and also the principles that you're going to now rely on in order to understand some of these steps that we're, we're going to be taking as we describe the passage of the autonomic nervous system throughout the, the whole head and neck. Now, um, what I'm going to do in this particular um, video now is I'm going to be drawing the structures through which the autonomic nervous system travel and are distributed throughout the head and neck. Um, we'll marry that up with some views of the skull so you can actually see what these structures are. So there'll be a schematic representation and then there'll be a skull display and in subsequent lectures we'll go on to then add on the cranial nerves which are responsible for carrying those parasympathetic fibres um, and those are 3, 5, 7 and 9 and um, we'll take it from then adding the sympathetics and finish off with explaining all the different ganglia and where they are and how they work. Okay, so without further ado, we're going to begin now with a schematic re representation on the board. So, Hope, Sean the man, <laughs> ready to go. Here we go. So, we'll start off here with the eye. So, the eye is... Yeah, there's a cornea, upper lid, LPS, M and M. This is your mullus muscle, lower lid. Behind that, tenderness ring. Behind that, superior orbital fissure. Behind that, parked big massive porter cabin of cavernous sinus. Running through the cavernous sinus is the internal carotid artery. So the internal carotid artery is a branch that goes up like that to join the circle of Willis and then a branch which projects forwards. This is your thalamic artery. Drops in a branch here. Continues over and drops in a branch here. So that's going to provide the ultrafiltrate for the water for your tears, for your lacrimal. Right, next I'd like to talk about what happens here. So remember the internal carotid artery runs through the cavernous sinus. And it comes here, there's a bend around here, and there's a little bit of a spout here. Okay. And that's it, so it bends through. Where it bends through and it just skims over is frame of lacerum. Remember lacerum has got this jaggedy edge and it's covered over by a membrane, covered over by a membrane, so nothing actually goes through that. Then it spin down to um, just below, or in front of lacerum, is frame of valley, and then just behind here is you've got this slit-like petrotympanic fissure, and that brings us to the region of the ear. So onto the ear, Okay, so this is your middle ear, this is right inside where all your um, ossicles are. You've got your stylomastoid foramen, your internal acoustic meatus, and this is a pathway in for some nerves which I'll highlight later. This is a hiatus for the greater petrosal nerve. And then here you've got this kidney bean shaped foramen, which is your jugular foramen, jugular foramen, JF. Okay. Let's move over. There's some vital structures we need to talk about which are important here, which is your facial artery. And just located right here in this region is your middle meningeal artery. Moving forwards, we've got here quite a big and important fossa, which is your pterygoid palatine fossa. That has, looking from the outside, laterally in, 
you've got a fissure, which is your pterygoid maxillary fissure, and then there's a hole in the top of that of the pterygoid palatine fossa, which is your sphenopalatine foramen. Okay, coming on to the bottom here, you have two foramina. One is your greater palatine foramen, lesser palatine foramen, and here is an exit point for some pharyngeal branches. Okay, so pharyngeal branches go down there. If I come up here, what I've got is your pterygoid canal beginning, and then before I draw in the rest of that pterygoid canal, I'll just draw this person here. This is foramen rotund, foramen rotund. Now, the pterygoid canal is going to climb up, 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 and find its way to the anterior portion of the foramen lasso. Anterior portion of the foramen lasso. Okay, um, and with that, that is all the structures for the um, head and neck, which are going to be involved transmitting. We're going to now move on to just point out some of those places on the bony skull. So Sean, if I could get you to just scan over here. If you start here, we're looking at the eye and the things which are associated with the eye. So that's your upper lid, your lower lid, levator palpebra superioris. So just um, make sure that everyone can see what I'm writing there. Landed, and then here is your Muller's muscle. Remember, Muller's muscle is coming in like that to hold on to the beta part of the superiors lacrimal gland. Um, and this is your arterial system coming in, um, tendinous ring, superior optical fissure. And here, this is cavernous sinus, okay, cavernous sinus, internal carotid artery, and frame and lastrum. All right, I'm going to just show you that now. So just um, tendinous ring sits right round at the back here. The tendinous ring. Okay. okay. Superior optal fissure. Again, superior optal fissure. Let's just get that right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Remember the porter cabin of the cavernous sinus sits in this whole region around here. Cavernous sinus. So everything going into the orbit, including your optic and ophthalmic artery, must go through the cavernous sinus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Looking down, here is the root for the internal carotid artery. So it climbs up to join the circle of Willis around here. Note that it passes over lacerum. You can see lacerum there. But it doesn't actually go through it. Nothing goes through lacerum. And that's where internal carotid is entering on the inferior aspect of the skull. Okay. I'll just quickly point out lacerum again. That's lacerum here. front of lacerum that this pterygoid canal begins. Okay, right, let's move on. If we go back to the board, so other structures, frame the valley, pterygoid tympanic fissure, middle meningeal artery, facial artery, in the middle ear with the hiatus for the greater petrosal nerve, the um, stylum mastoid foramen, internal acoustic meatus, and the jugular foramen. Let's have a look back over here. So the things of note, foramen of valley. Petro tympanic fissure. Let's bring down to the inside now. Remember the rock, petrus, part of the temporal bone. And here 
is the hiatus. I so just show you the light here. Hiatus for the greater petrosal nerve coming out is going to run down onto the floor underneath internal carotid and then pierce through into that point for the canal at the anterior part of foramen lacerum. Okay. Good. Um, next, internal acoustic meatus. Dilemastoid framing. Kidney bean shaped jugular framing. And then remember, middle meningeal artery is going to be coming in to spinosum like that, and that's located posterior to framing the valley. Okay, right. Last thing is if you'd like to look over here, this is the pterygopalatine fossa. Okay, looking into it laterally, you can look through a fissure, which is a gap. And then you've got the sphenopalatine foramen. And then there's greater palatine, fra greater palatine foramen on the bottom, less palatine foramen, uh, an exit point for some pharyngeal branches, and then foramen rotundum. So we'll start off with foramen rotundum. In fact, I'll start off by pointing this area out, and then we'll point to all the things that go in and out of it. So. Skull with the mandible in place, we're just looking at this area here. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove the mandible and you get a better view. So that's where we are there. This area here is the fissure. Okay, pterygo maxilla, pterygo maxillary fissure, pterygo palatine fossa. And then if I poke this hole in here, that is the sphenopalatine foramen. And if I flip back onto this surface here, the inferior aspect, what we have is the Greater palatine foramen. Mm -hmm. Lesser palatine foramina. Okay, um, the last one is foramen rotundum going in there. So rotundum is this one here. just look from the side again you'll be able to see where so that's still in rotundum if you look from the side now you'll be able to see perhaps mm -hmm. where that's coming out just hold it to the light for you there okay that's lovely so that completes our tour of the structures involved in transmitting the autonomic nervous system through the head and neck